Hey folks, Michael Collins here with EnviroReporter.com on Sunday, November 6th. We have been up and about through Southern and Central California taking radiation readings throughout to see the uh, state of our snowpack and to see uh, just how hot things are in various places in this area for the last two weeks. What you see in front of you is a towel that was used to collect rainwater off my windshield that has been sitting there for two hours, two hours plus. So it's not fresh rain, it's been there for two hours plus. Now I've seen some of the recent readings of these uh, jet stream driven rains in Southern California, uh, uh, Lucid out in Glendale, uh, and uh, uh, Kim has been reporting hers from up the coast here in Southern California. We have taken a background here at Radiation Station in this particular room and it came in uh, about 12 minutes ago at 43.8 counts per minute which is a little high for inside. So what we're going to do now is go down on this uh, rain precipitate on this paper towel and uh, just check it out. Uh, like I said this rain is at least two hours old so radon progeny should have dropped off at least about 50% in the first hour or so. <clears throat> so what we're going to try to be detecting here, or trying to determine from this detection, is if we have any Fukushima related fallout. So here's our inspector. Let's turn it to timer. Let's turn it on. 100% calibrated. 10 minute test. And as you can see, I'm going to have it balanced up over this thing so it doesn't touch the bottom but it still does have this covering here which will keep it from getting any goo on our screen so here we go now in doing uh, some tests earlier about 45 minutes ago, uh, I eyeballed 136 counts per minute um, in here versus this background, which is about three times background. And the rain at that time was uh, in, in excess of an hour old, about an hour and a half old. Now, while we're looking at this, I'm going to bring you up to date on what we've been testing. On October 23rd, we were in Lone Pine, California, up uh, Highway 395, and we found the whole town of Lone Pine to be very high in uh, radiation, but then again, it is above sea level by about 3,000 feet, <clears throat> and um, uh, it is at the base of the Sierra Nevadas, meaning a lot of granite uh, coming down the hill. That said, uh, we tested a unit uh, that we were staying in at the uh, at a motel there, and its average came in at 82.5 counts per minute, which is a very high interior average. It's over double exterior average for Los Angeles. Uh, we then uh, tested uh, in the morning uh, 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 another unit. Uh, and it came in at about 69.3 counts per minute on a 10 minute average. We went and camped at a campground above Lone Pine and uh, we tested the creek water there. We actually tested creek water out of a place called Tuttle Creek. We uh, soaked a paper towel. We took uh, appropriate uh, precautions not to get anything on our inspector. And that creek water at 11.10 in the morning uh, was at 72.5 counts per minute which is actually less than the uh, background uh, that we were picking up in this motel down in, in Lone Pine. Uh, we then uh, traveled to about 10,000 feet in the high Sierras and uh, quite a heck of a ride, quite a heck of a, a, a view and we tested high Sierra snow that was uh, up uh, about 10,000 feet and that came in on a 10 minute average at uh, 68.5 counts per minute. Now this is about two miles above sea level. So 68.5 says to us no fallout detection in the last rains uh, and snows of the Sierra Nevadas. This is at the end of October. Now we have this new storm that's come in that has brought more rain. So the rainfall before, which is about from a uh, month ago, month and a half ago, in that area did not seem, according to our calculations, to be ca uh, to carrying any uh, uh, radioactive material in excess of what you would expect at that elevation, uh, which would be uh, cosmic 
uh, radiation because, uh, higher than normal at sea level because, of course, you have less atmosphere to protect and bounce that radiation back into space. On the 29th of October, we stayed at a place called Cottonwood Canyon, and we were there to wash, and we took a, a, a camping there, and we took a, a background there, and it came in at 83.9 uh, counts per minute, which is quite high, uh, considering that we were only about 600 feet above sea level. However, <clears throat> it's not to be surprised. I checked a lot of rocks in this campground. One, one of the rocks was uh, up to 154 without blinking. So that's not to be surprised. There are several places to stay in Death Valley National Park. And they are beautiful places, as is that park. Uh, a place called Stovepipe Wells. We checked the interior of one of the units there on uh, uh, Halloween, October 31st. Uh, 2011 and at noon that came in at 40.7 counts per minute which is what you would expect. Later that day we were in Parump, Nevada and we were at, an all, uh, at a Walmart and I was outside and I took a 10 minute average and it came in at 29.0 counts per minute which is very low and it's interesting because it's upwind of the Nevada test range and we did not see any indication of Nevada test range residual fallout affecting that. Now, one of the lowest places in the United States is a place called Furnace Creek. It's below sea level. It's in Death Valley. Uh, quite an extensive uh, uh, setup they have there. They're just about to have their uh, Death Valley 49ers days in, in uh, Furnace Creek outside of their general store. Did a 10 minute average. Came in at 23.3 counts per minute. That is less than almost any interior average we've ever taken here in Los Angeles. Very low. Now on the 4th of October, I mean uh, on the 4th of November, as we move into November 2011, we went to a place that is the lowest place in uh, North America. It's called Badwater and it's where the salt pan, salt pan is in Death Valley and uh, it's 282 feet Below, below sea level. Uh, you can see a mountain there called Telescope Peak. It's at 11,000 feet. So if you take the minus uh, under the sea level there at Badwater and you go up to Telescope, in one view you can see a two mile difference. But that's neither here nor there. At Badwater, the uh, average we got was uh, uh, 35.8 counts per minute, which was higher than uh, uh, the uh, Furnace Creek, which we found surprising, but we're not sure why. Now, like I said earlier, we uh, took a eyeball uh, reading of this uh, material here, and it came in at 136 counts per minute. We can see we're not anywhere near that yet on our averaging, um, but like I said, this rain was collected, deliberately collected, two hours after it fell uh, on our vehicle. Because uh, we understand radiant, radon progeny uh, and uh, how it works and its half lives. And we're trying to determine whether a rain that sat a little bit that might have half lifed out its radon progeny a little bit would be anywhere over uh, what we have here. Now, when you, when you hear that clicking there, uh, that, that, this, is, uh, this sample is uh, lively. Now, we know that. Uh, that we're on the we're on the bottom part of the jet stream here. The jet stream dips through the United through the United States. It's been doing so ever since the meltdowns in Japan began on March 11th, and uh, we seem to be getting less radiation from jet stream uh, activity, as evidenced here and by a few other measurements of folks uh, who are supplying them to radiation station. We seem to be getting less than folks in the Northwest of the United States and in British Columbia, Canada. Folks across the Midwest, especially our friend in St. Louis, north of St. Louis, Porter Blog, he's got detections up to, uh, gosh, I, I think the last one, or one of them was 170 times background or even more. I haven't checked my notes of late. We've got detections of way over 100 times background up in Toronto. So we know that on the jet stream there are higher numbers 
I know it's been posited that maybe in Santa Monica or in Los Angeles that uh, even though we're not getting uh, these kinds of high detections on our rain samples, that maybe somehow uh, undetectable amounts of fallout are uh, landing in Southern California. Uh, maybe. But uh, thinking empirically, uh, you know, we could think all sorts of things. Uh, empirical, empirical scientific thinking is what it takes to really look at this stuff because uh, uh, while we may wish we didn't have triple meltdowns in this world and them releasing untold amounts of radiation into the environment, into the groundwater at Fukushima, uh, we have, uh, as you know in the past couple of weeks, even mainstream media has picked up on the recriticality issue that whatever we may think, we need proof. And uh, proof of Southern California uh, getting uh, hammered by uh, radiation from Fukushima without being able to detect it is kind of a stretch from my way of thinking. However, that said, what you're seeing here is a detection on a sample, which is now getting up to be uh, certainly a, a statistically valid and in excess of our background of 43.8 at this present time. It's coming close to double background. The thing is, is that if we think that there's radiation about, we should be able to detect it. Uh, the EPA does have a radiation monitor uh, checking for beta radiation somewhere in LA, and we've seen very high beta spikes when you haven't detected them here on our inspector. <laughs> our inspector also detects beta and alpha radiation as well as gamma. It can also detect X-ray radiation. So these beta readings by the government are unexplained. Certainly, the government isn't explaining anything. Now we've come to our uh, to our finish here. It's at 8:05, so that'd be 80.5 counts per minute, which is certainly down from the uh, 136 that I tested an hour ago. So we might have these uh, short-lived uh, uh, radionuclides here that are impacting this uh, reading. So I, I do believe that we do have radon progeny here. Uh, however, like I said, I tried to let it uh, half-life off by leaving the sample on the car for a while. I'll just take a quick look here at how much over background we have. And we have we have uh, 80 83.8% over background, which is kind of in line <clears throat> with radon progeny, uh, lowering of half-life. But like I said, this is a, a sample that was collected uh, and left several hours, and it's, uh, it's uh, original uh, one of our original readings on this out there after it being on our vehicle for a while, a clean vehicle, was 136. In any case, we're going to be continuing to test any and all rain here at Radiation Station. We will be posting all of our results from our travels throughout Southern California and the Lone, Pal Lone Pine and Death Valley regions. And uh, some good news there. We've got no detections of uh, in excess in the snowpack that we could tell that's coming down the eastern Sierra, which of course goes into the aqueduct, which waters millions of people and uh, crops and livestock here in Southern California. Uh, thanks for checking in and check back often.